So that's from E6 down to an A5. What is that? Look at your phone. Look at your phone. A D6. A 6. C sharp 6, yeah? That was a D6. Yep. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and look at me. I'm just relaxed. I'm just sitting here, right? And it's amazing, you know, how high the voice can actually go. And that's not push. I'm not, I'm not trying to screech. I'm just... Oh my God! Whistle. <laughs> I'm in my whistle, okay? That was the easy thing. Yeah, he's... Nope, I, I don't know if I can go any higher than that. It's alright, it's alright. That's cool. Just, uh, thank you, I appreciate that. But you have to understand that that part of the range, that's a very difficult part. And it's because the male voice has a much difficult time thinning out than a female voice. So what note did I hit? An E6, correct? You saw it on your pitch, right? An E6, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, and going up there as a male, let's say on a somewhat falsetto slash flagellate slash whistle kind of quality. So it's not like a pure quiet sound. That was quite loud. I heard that too. It was quite resonant. It's a, it's a very similar sound Dimash would use. You know Dimash Kudabiergen from Kazakhstan? Very good singer. and he has those extensions and whatnot okay a female falsetto female head voice can go at that range okay they can kind of like pull their voices because you know of their overall physiology of their voice you know how their voice sits higher than a male voice in general and also you know when they see their girl girlfriends or somebody uh, after a long time they go ow, ow, right they do stuff like that and they can just do that you know but uh, for us as guys it's like a very difficult thing uh, but you can see that you know the the male voice if, if I may say, a male falsetto can extend that high as well, but it blends with the flagellate. Okay, so it's like a mixed voice of falsetto slash head voice and flagellate or whistle. I'm kind of like saying it in this way because, you know, I want the viewers to know that, you know, they are kind of like interchangeable terms so that they don't get too confused with it. Although I know I'm probably going to get a lot of bashing from some vocal coaches. I know a couple of y'all, you know, are very like attacky type, more drama type, but it's okay. I, it's tough love. I understand that. But hey, we're just going to have to agree to disagree. I mean, show me hitting an E6 like that. If you can do it, awesome. If you can, get the fuck out of here, frankly. <laughs> but yeah, you can see that the male voice extends quite high. So let me see if I can do it again. I'm probably not very able to do it because I'm so excited right now, but let's see. So again, I'm creating E6 to E5. Okay, again, you know, this is something uh, I don't necessarily work with, but here's my insights that I've been kind of like messing around with lately is that you work your M3 vibratory mechanism. And you're like, what in the world is he talking about? Vibratory mechanism M1. Okay, and, and I'll, I'll share it with you right now, okay? Again, this might be on uh, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, I don't know, Facebook. Um, and so vibratory mechanism M0 is vocal fry. Uh, that's vibratory mechanism. Yeah, and you can do that really well, you know, and I, I always knew you could do it even in our first lesson because you had a very clear speaking voice and that is where you should be stemming your low and mid notes for your singing, okay? And we're currently working on that and today you did pretty well, so congrats on that, okay? So getting, yeah, so getting back to the mode, okay? Vibratory mechanism M0 is vocal fry, which is the lowest registration in both the male and the female voice. Then we have M1 or vibratory mechanism M1, that's chest voice. Ah, ah, 
the voice we normally speak with, right? Um, then we have the vibratory mechanism M1.5, which is technically mixed voice, although it's not fully scientifically correct, okay? I'm just letting you know. So technically they would say M2 or vibratory mechanism M2, which is head voice, right? And that one right there, right? Um, I can also do it breathy, which is technically falsetto. Right? And, you know, they're, they're really done by the similar me mechanism, so M2. But, you know, some schools and some teachers will say, oh, falsetto and head voice are different. Some say falsetto and head voice are similar. Some say they're the same thing, okay? And the people who usually say the same thing, they associate head voice as a developed, more stronger falsetto, okay? Again, I'm throwing it out here so that, you know, people who are watching will know that, okay, 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 I agree with that one. I'm, we're cool. We're good. We're good. Uh, so now, getting to M3 or vibratory mechanism M3, that's really flagellate, flagellate slash whistle, okay? So I can go in head voice or falsetto. Right now, now over at the top, it was somewhat connecting a bit with the um, the M3, I would say, because a true M3 vibratory mechanism M3 would sound like this. I'll show you. Do you hear how tiny that is? Do you hear that? It's much different than yeah. versus. You can hear the obvious difference. Now, what is the difference you see from an outside appearance? The shaping of my mouth, right? Yeah. Shaping of my mouth, right? So yeah. you notice that when I went higher in my sort of mixed voice of um, falsetto or head voice and flagellate and whistle, so I combined the two, then I just went. And I keep the mouth open like that to kind of like keep it connected. Look, going up there like that without pushing, without getting louder, without adding more, like without getting airy, it's very hard for the male voice and even for the female voice. Look, I just went as high as an E6. That's pretty high, okay? And I am a mid to low tenor, okay? I'm, I feel like I'm a mid tenor, really. I'm not a high tenor because there are high tenors as well, or higher male voices, you know? Michael Jackson, Bruno Mars are examples. Um, Jordan uh, Jordan Smith from The Voice, Noah Davis from American Idol. Those guys have like really high voices. So if I try to imitate them, they're like, oh my God, I'm like right here. And they're always talking up there like that. It's like their voices just sits up there like that, which is technically in the female range. Oh my God, hey, I'm doing great. It's like they talk in the lower to upper fourth octave, usually in the lower fourth octave, which is where a lot of female mezzo-sopranos would sit. So for somebody like me as a mid-tenor and people with the lower voices than me, they will have a very hard time doing something like, something like that it's hard and I'm not getting louder by any means okay and also you have to know that I also have a voice disorder a neurological slash functional voice disorder called spasmodic dysphonia which makes these things really impossible and I used to think it was impossible for me really until recently when I started messing slightly around with flagellate or M3 vibratory mechanism M3 registration so it's important that we are aware of these different registrations in the voice and we train them either together we mix them up like a mixed voice or we do them separately yeah because look um so i'll show you something so if i take my chest voice as high as let's say um let me give you a quick demo let's say a b flat right if that was a bit loud so if i go ah Right? That's open timbre or more belt timbre or shout timbre or yell timbre. 
but I'm doing it in a more controlled manner. So that's like a mixture of chest voice and mixed voice, if I may say. Um, and well, that might sound a bit confusing. Let me just say it's a mixed voice, but with open vowel, okay? Not a closed timbre vowel. Now, if I stay true chest at that high note, so a true chest is this sound. That's okay, it's okay. A true chest is this sound. Ah, ah. So if I start talking in my full density in my chest voice, I sound like that. Now, here's another confusing thing. I can reduce my volume and still stay in full density or, you know, pretty close to full density. Do you see how different I sound, right? I don't sound like myself, right? I sound different because now there's more density, but less volume. And if I add the volume now and it sounds like that, so I back, I can back off the volume and still maintain that density. And this is what I sound like. I sound like, you know, a macho man or something like that, right? And a lot of people I'm sure you've met or seen in your life a uh, time that, you know, some people talk like that. So they naturally talk in fuller density. Okay, I don't talk like that. I talk like this, as you already know. Um, so if I take that sound higher without covering the vowel or without getting into a mixed timbre, it sounds like, let's say, ah, it sounds like that, like a shout, like a shout. And I kept my mouth open, so I didn't let the vowel modify. But it's not pushed, ah, like that. I can do better. But right now, my voice is, let's say, not wanting to go there. And that's all right. You know, that's not a sound I would use in singing anyway. And I don't really train that type of sound that high. Okay. So just to kind of like show you the possibility of a voice, because, you know, a lot of teachers out there say that, oh, you cannot do this. They, you cannot do that. And they try to put their clients or students in a box, which is good, but it's bad at the same time. And, and I want to talk about that because when you kind of like get into that type of mindset, you literally get fearful of just making sounds in general because you're like, oh, my teacher told me to not to do this or not to do that. Or maybe I'm kind of going into bad because it creates a wrong mindset. I always tell people that, you know, experiment with sounds because that's how the majority of natural singers really learn how to sing through experimentation, through trial and error. And that's kind of like what really happens in lessons too. I show you something and we figure it out through trial and error. We don't go by reading a book and try to do it. That's not that's not really help. That's not really helpful. You'll gain more knowledge, but you can't exactly apply that in your voice. So that's kind of like useless. We just need to kind of know that as voice teachers and vocal coaches, because, you know, it helps us to teach better. And just so that, you know, we know what we're talking about. Right. So it's like a kind of appeal, appeal to authority in a sense. Um, but you as singers, you guys don't really need that. As long as you can make the sounds, as long as you understand the differences in the sounds, you guys should be fine. So now getting back, to the modes that we were talking about, the vibratory mechanism, M1, M0, M1, M2, and M3. Now, if you go higher, um, let's say an A4, A5. I did it open, like. So that's from E6 down to an A5. So E6, again, you know, those are getting into that whistle register, whistle category, okay? It's too high for the male voice to pull their faults in the You can't do it. You're going to shout. You're going to get very loud. And did I get louder? No. I kept the volume the same, okay? Very similar, if I may say. So you can see that I opened the mouth really wide to actually find that E6, okay? And then I brought it down. And I did a skill. I did a five tone skill. Na 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 na. Or na 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 na. A descending five tone skill. It's not just me trying to <laughs> and try to screech it out. Like a lot of guys like to find their whistle and they call it, oh, that's that's my whistle. That's not whistle, that's bullshit. And I'll call it out. Anybody who's doing that, that's bullshit. I'm sorry. That's not what Mariah or Ariana Whitney Houston they did that. No, of course not. It's a much different so that's a post strange sound. That's a strange sound. That doesn't help at all. I tried it myself over a year. Didn't help for over a year, for more than a year. Didn't help me at all. That's not how you get those notes. And you have to understand that these types of things comes from how developed your mixed voices, how developed your chest voice and head voices. When those mechanisms are correct, are functioning correctly, that's when you can really start going uphill, like I just did. Okay. Again, this is not something I really work towards. 
But I always had a theory back in my head that if I can get a really solid mixed voice, if I can really develop my chest voice to its full potential, my head voice, my mixed voice to its full potential, hopefully I'll be able to go to the whistle. And I just showed you, I just did right there. And it's a connected sound. It's a pretty resonant sound too. It's not a quiet sound, it's quite loud. And I know this is gonna confuse a lot of voice teachers because they'll be like, and I know they will ask me questions like, how did you hit an E6 like that with your mouth that open? Because I've never seen anybody doing it like that either, okay? But it's possible. And I, I had a theory again, and I did that, it worked, okay? And a lot of people will be like, oh, you have to narrow down your mouth, you have to narrow down the, so I didn't narrow the vowel, so how did that note came out? Because the voice has infinite possibilities. We're just too afraid to explore. Okay, the voice can do a lot of things, okay? So with that being said, I will probably go ahead and wrap this video here, okay? So yeah, boom.